Hi everyone, it's boy Sean. Welcome back to another Summoner's World video. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my Speed Dragon Speed 10 team. This was one of my goals during free room removal. I wanted to make a proper Speed DP10 team. My previous attempts were always putting units together and hoping that they would work. <laughs> they were, you know, okay-ish, but not the best. But this time around, I managed to put together a team that I think is super consistent but still decently fast. This is not the fastest team because there's Lisa in it and Lisa is not a damage dealer. So it's gonna be slower. The average run time is around 120 or 130, sometimes 110, but never sub 1 minute because there's only 2 damage dealer. But in my opinion, it is super safe. It still fails. I must admit, because RNG will never be always in your favor. It is still much safer than whatever I've been doing so far. First, let's take a look at Galeon. My Galeon has been resigned from his wheel shield responsibility entirely because I don't use that team anymore. There are two main reasons why I don't use wheel shield team anymore. It got boring and it was not really consistent. As long as Aquila or Galleon fails to do something, the whole team just crumbled. I have switched to double Lucian full time. <laughs> now he's on violent focus with speed, attack, and attack. This way, he can still deal some decent damage, have high accuracy, and be fast. His runes are very normal, I guess. Not anything too particularly good. So yeah, it's a very average Galleon right now. The next person that moves in my team is Lisa. She's having my raid 5 build with Violent Endure, Speed, HP, and HP. I tested Lisa moving before Galleon. It didn't have any significant impact. So whether Lisa moved before Galleon or after Galleon, I think it doesn't matter. One thing about my Lisa is that she has decent accuracy. For raid 5, you don't need accuracy like at all. You only need like 15 and it's easy to get 15 one five from substat. It's been proven by data miner. Raid 5 boss only have 30% resistance. So you only need 15% accuracy. But for DB10 boss, it is safe to have 55% or 45% accuracy. And from my experience so far, she's awesome. Lisa makes the run so much safer she eliminates a lot of risk factor so like the blue doggy she also have a team up ability that can randomly select allies to attack the enemy unit so she may select herself or not at all which is okay it doesn't really matter whoever she selects can do damage apply debuff and have their skill off cooldown by one turn that's really awesome this is where accuracy matter. She can strip the immunity from the dragon's boss. So, there are many times whereby Galeon will be super stupid. He can just parish strike into default attack and default attack into parish strike. Who has time to loot, bro? Like, seriously. So, you will not have enough damage to kill the boss, even with a third damage dealer. So, having the ability to remove the immunity and a second chance for Galleon to do his shit is really important. Next will be my two damage dealer. The first one to move is Stella. Stella moved before Blue Doggy. She's having speed, crit rate, and attack. Why crit rate? Because my violent rune sucks. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I don't have good violent crit rate, so I must use crit rate. But it also means, you look at this, 20% crit damage, 19% crit damage, crit damage, speed, speed, no crit rate at all. I don't have crit rate on my violent runes. I want Stella to move to apply defense break before Doggy can move. There'll be many times whereby the dragon just refused to get armor broken by Galleon. You need Stella to be there to expose the dragon weakness. This girl, everything about her is perfect for Giant's B10. After Stella is Blue Doggy. He's having Violent Broken, Speed, Crit Damage, and Attack. With this skill, he'll be able to deal a lot of damage and help others to reduce cooldown. Ambush deal damage according to your speed. So in DB10, having a lot of speed right here and speed leader skill 
Tark just deal so much damage with this skill. It is crucial to have very decent rune in your Tark so that he can deal damage. Tark base stats is not amazing, only the speed is amazing. Attack is rather low and he's super sushi. I know that damage is prioritized but don't forget to give him some decent HP and defense. I don't like my defense and HP right now, it's too low. He dies too easily. So having another maybe 100 defense and maybe 2k more HP would be ideal. But that's why I had shield rune on Stella. And last and not least, Verdahal. He's having double revenge, speed, crit rate and attack. HP substat all around so that he can survive. It's very important for Vert to survive. If he dies before the boss, you lose. If he dies during the boss, you may still win, but low chance. Let's say Blue Doggy die in Zyro stage, you can still win, but Vert can't die. He's the most important unit in this team. He moves last so that everyone can enjoy the tank bar boost to its full potential. If Vert moves first in the team, you can only enjoy a little bit of that 40% attack bar boost. If he moves last, your team can move instantly after the first round. So Vert moving last is quite important in Dragon Speed 10, speed or not. Double Revenge allows him to survive better during the Zyros stage if the Crystal choose to hit him. There's a high chance he revenge and then your attacker can kill Zyros instantly. During the boss stage, the boss will be able to hit one or two times and if Vert revenge, that run will be a very good run. <laughs> because when Vert revenges, the entire team can deal another round of damage. You can also go Violent Revenge by go Double Revenge Shield because I want this shield set right here. This one has very good stats and shield allow me to keep Tark alive easier. He's so swishy like <laughs> my god, I need to get better runes on my Tark. So this team is a very typical speed DB10 team, nothing innovative here. One thing I want to point out is that your damage dealer Stella or Theo or Chao or Sigmarus, whoever you want to use, need to have good runes, not Sapa, not average. They need to have enough damage so you can kill the boss fast. In DB10, you cannot afford to have average damage. No matter what nukers you are trying to use, they need to kill the dragon as fast as possible. In the past, when I try out speed DB10, I used to run like average 5 star rune on Tar and it didn't turn out really well, Tar didn't hit for shit. These runes usually belong to one of my best damage dealers for PvP but I can't just put a shit rune here, I need something like this for Tar to work in DB10. So I have max crit damage, level 9 speed, level 9 attack, decent HP, level 4 water, are towers important for speed DB10? Hell yeah, they are super important. This is like another 15 speed. This is another 18% attack. That's a lot of stats. So that's it for my Speed Dragon Speed 10 team. Thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. Leave a like if you enjoy. Leave a comment to ask about Speed DB10. I'm more than happy to help. Subscribe if you are new. I'll see you guys in the next video as soon as possible. Bye! As you guys know or may not know, I'll be doing a collaboration with Shred Puzzle next week. We will be featuring one of you guys and use your account to battle each other in live arena in the global server. This week I picked a random account, I reached out to him and he hasn't got back to me yet. I gave him like 3 days, haven't heard from him since. And I don't want you guys to wait, I don't want Shredded to wait, it's not fair for everyone. So I'm sorry, I'm going to pick another account. And it should appear on the screen right about now. Congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you. I'll tell you what will happen. And I hope that you'll get back to me. Okay? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll just let this run end by itself. And I'll see you in the next video as soon as possible. Bye.